Karina, baby, I just want you to know it's okay to be sad and it's okay to cry no matter what anyone feels like around you or anything like that. It's okay if you're sad. It's okay if you cry. Um, we're going to be doing the book for the 10th today and it's going to be for the 11th instead because Mama messed up my star's car is the 11th, not the 10th. The 10th is actually five brown cow. And then the 12th is a thimble too much. So mama does record some of these uh, early. So like today is the 9th. Um, mama actually just got back from New Hampshire visiting your cousins and your great aunt Lori. Uh, you have two second cousins and a third cousin. I think that was how, how it would work for you because Erica and Holly are my first cousins. So Eric and Holly would be your second cousins and Alisana, Erica's daughter, which is your third cousin. Or maybe it's your second cousin. Honestly, I'm not really sure now. I don't, maybe I'm confusing myself. Anyway, they're your cousins, no matter what, they're your cousins. Alisana is my second cousin because she's one generation removed from me. She is a generation younger than I am. So that's how she's my first cousin once removed or a second cousin. I believe that's how that works. And then um, your... So, since they're my first cousins, right, Erica and Holly are my first cousins, I think that they're your second cousins because they're one generation removed up from you, but Allison is the same generation as you. So, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Anyway, though, today is actually the 9th, and Mama just got back from seeing my cousins and seeing my Aunt Lori. Your great Uncle Artie, um passed away the other day and I haven't said anything about it on the videos because I don't want to your great uncle Artie was a great man he was patient and kind and caring and you could tell him anything doesn't matter what you tell him he won't tell anybody what you told him he didn't gossip around town about anything that you told him he was a great man I wish that you had gotten to meet him he was a good man uh, when he came in, because he's from, he's from, um, like, up in the higher states, so he's from New Hampshire and Massachusetts. He lives up there. He's not from there, but that's where he lived for 30 years, so, I mean, that's really where he's from. And, um, you know, so he would come in to see us sometimes, and we'd go up to see him sometimes, and uh, sometimes we'd, like, we'd catch fireflies with our cousins, and we would play games and we went on a whale watching tour up in Massachusetts and we climbed up huge rocks and we went on big boulders and we went to all the beaches, we went to every last beach. We really, like when we didn't get to spend an over amount of time with our cousins, but when we did, we spent good time with them because we knew like every single time that we spent with them was really special. Like it was, we were out, we were adventuring, we were going places and doing things. It wasn't that often, but it was, you know, enough to have good memories. And uh, you'll get to meet your cousins hopefully soon. All your cousins. You have so many cousins. Because you actually do come from a very big family. Um, you know, my, from my grandma. My grandma had 13 brothers and sisters. And so you have a lot of cousins. And you have a lot of, you know, you have, an, you have a lot of aunts. You have a couple aunts. You have a couple uncles. Like, you know, because you have married in aunts too. It's not just... You know, the four of us, it's the four of us, plus there's two of us, plus there's, like, you know, so you have, you have aunts and uncles that you, you will eventually know and meet. Um, life was busy when I had you. It was really busy because Mama kept life busy and we lived pretty far from everybody. Mama just wanted to take you out and do things with you, but getting to know your family is very important, too, because life doesn't last forever. I'll never refuse care. Oh, my God. Your great uncle had a chance to be seen by the doctor, and he, he didn't. He left. But so, mom was pretty sad today, to say the least. Um, you know, but I'm just glad that I get to make these home videos with for you, not with you anymore, but for you. Eventually, I'll be making them with you again. Cause every single moment, mama has an issue with time. Cause my papa died when I was little, and so I have an issue with time. Every single moment is special in your life and you really have to like you know 60 seconds worth of that distance run just like it says in the Rubriard Kipling program if you, it, or Rubriard Kipling poem if you keep your life going and just
cram what you can into it. Like, it's just... Like a short baby. And you just got to treat every moment like it's special. All right, baby. So for the 11th, for the 10th is five brown cows. But this is going to be for the 11th for the video. Because I already made the 10th. And I made the 10th um, Mr. Star's car. Where he drove all the way around town. And he forgot to fill it up. So it stopped going. But five brown cows. Five brown cows on a green hill grazing. Four white swans over blue seas flying. Three gray donkeys on yellow straw standing. Two ginger kittens by a red fire sleeping. One black rat with a pink nose twitching. All right, so what do, what do they have? They have five brown cows, right? One, two, three, four, five. Let's sign it. One, two, three, four, five. Five brown. Oh. I did it wrong. Brown cows. Five brown cows. And what are they doing? They're grazing. Four white swans over blue seas flying. Three gray, right? How would you gray? Gray donkeys on yellow straw standing. Two ginger kittens by a red fire sleeping. One black rat with a pink, wait, with a pink nose twitching. So they have brown cows moo, white swans, quack, quack. They probably go, right? A donkey, probably chewing. Kittens, meowing, meow, meow. And a rat with a pink nose twitching. So that was for the 11th, but it's for the 10th for the poem. Okay? And then our next storybook, which would be for the 11th, even though it's kind of out of order. We did seven Simons the other day. Remember how fun that story was? They had seven little seven boys named Simon and they all got taught a different trade all useful when used together so they worked as a team right one could build towers one could see out those towers to see as far as the worlds are wide one could build a ship and the other one could drop the ship into the water to protect it and one could uh, steal anything that he wanted right so, building towers, looking out, building ships, sinking the ships, and stealing. There's two more. There's seven, seven Simons. So, there's two more besides from those. But they all had to work together, right? There was this band when I was growing up uh, called the Hanson Brothers, and my, my father had twins, right? my brother and I, and he wanted us to always work together no matter what. Like, he's like, you two have to stick together, you two have to work together no matter what. That didn't happen, but he was trying to instill with us um, the working together and the camaraderie in that. I really, really want you to have more siblings, Karina, because I need you to have people that you can rely on. Like, I called my sister today, well, I didn't call her, I texted my, six, my sister today, and it's such a relief that I have that. You know, I have so many aunts and uncles, and they get to rely on each other. They don't really do that anymore. But, I mean, growing up with siblings and having family is one of the most essential things that you could have. I know this world is now created so that women work outside the home, and, you know, they don't really have babies like that anymore. And, like, they don't have big, strong families. But you need a strong family. You need a strong family bond. You really do. Like, I want you to know all of your family and I want you to be protected at the same time though too because sometimes yeah but like I want you to know all your family I just I want you to be protected with and knowing your family though too but you, you do you have some good cousins you have some good aunts you have some good uncles you have you know lots of things to learn from everybody everyone teaches you something everything is a character building situation like everyone has so many experiences and you know reading books and learning from that is amazing and having people t 
talk to you and like just share their wisdom. Everyone has a different story and different perception on this life. So just having a shared wisdom is always amazing. It's that, um, crowds, it's, um, that wisdom and crowds. I read a book that was called wisdom and crowds years ago in, uh, like 2006. And, uh, it really does show like how there really is wisdom within like the crowd of the community. All right, so our next story in our fairy tale book is The Little Match Girl. It was bittery cold, snow was falling, and darkness was gathering, for it was the last evening of the old year. It was New Year's Eve. In the cold and gloom, a poor little match girl walked barefoot and bareheaded through the streets. She was wearing slippers, it is true, when she left home but what good were they they had been her mother's so you can imagine how big they were the little match girl had lost them as she ran across the street to escape from two carriages that were be driven that were being driven terribly fast one sipper could not be found and a boy had ran off with the other saying that he could use it very nicely as a cradle some day when he had a child of his own. So the little match girl walked about the streets on her naked feet, which were red and blue with the cold. In her old apron, she carried a great many matches, and she had a pocket of them in her hand as well. Nobody had brought... That is a really sad story. Nobody had bought any from her, and no one had given her a single penny all day long. She crept along, shivering and hungry. The picture of misery, cold little thing, the snowflakes fell on her long golden hair, which curled so prettily about her neck that she did not think of her appearance now. But she did not think of her appearance now. Lights were shining on every window, and there was a glorious smell of roast goose in the streets, for it was New Year's Eve, and she could not think of anything else. She huddled down in a harp of a corner formed by two houses, one of which projected farther out into the streets than the other. But though she tucked her little legs up under her, she felt the cold, she felt colder and colder. She could not dare to go home, for she had sold no matches, nor a single penny, nor earned a, sil a single penny. Her father would be sure to beat her. And besides, it was so cold at home, for they had nothing but the roof above them, and the wind whistled through that, even though the largest cracks were stuffed with straw and rags. Her thin hands were almost numb with cold. If only she could dare pull just one small match from the pocket, strike it on the wall, and warm her fingers. She pulled out, she, pull, she pulled one out. Scratch how it splintered and blazed. It had a warm, bright flame like a tiny candle when she had her hand over it. But what a strange light. It seemed to the little girl as if she were sitting in front of a great iron stove with polished brass knobs and brass ornaments. The fire burned so beautifully and gave out such a lovely warmth. Oh, how wonderful that was. The cold had already... Oh, the child had already stretched her feet to warm them, too. When out went the flame, the stove vanished, and there she sat with a bit of a burned match in her hand. She struck another. It burned clearly, and where the light fell upon the wall, the bricks became transparent like gauze. She could see right into the room where the shining white cloth was spread on the table. 
It was covered with beautiful china, and in the corner of it stood a roast goose stuffed with prunes and apples, steaming deliciously. And what was even more wonderful was that the goose hopped down from the dish, waddled across the floor with floor with carving knife and fork in it in its back, waddled straight up to the poor child. Then out went the match, and nothing could be seen but a thick, cold wall. She struck another match, and suddenly she was sitting under the most beautiful Christmas tree. It was much larger and much lovely, lovelier than the one she had seen last year through the glass doors of the rich merchant's house. A thousand candles lit up the golden branches and gaily colored balls like those in the shop windows looked down upon her. The little girl reached forward with both hands, then out went the match. The many candles of the Christmas tree rose higher and higher through the air, and she saw that they had now turned into bright stars. One of them fell, streaking the sky with light. Now someone is dying, said the little girl. Okay. There's the little match girl. See her? And look at that beautiful tree that she's sitting next to. For old granny, the only one who had ever been good to her. Now someone is dying, said the little girl, for old granny, the only one who has ever been good to her. But who was dead had said, whenever a star falls, a soul goes up to heaven. She struck another match on the wall. Once more, there was light, and the glow stood her old, and in the glow stood her old granny, but oh, so bright and shining and looking so gentle, kind and loving. Granny, cried the little girl, oh, take me with you. I know you will disappear when the match is burned out. You will vanish like the warm stove, the lovely roast goose, and the gorgeous Christmas tree. Then she quickly struck all the rest of the matches. She had in the pocket, for she died so, so uh, for she did so want to keep her granny with her. The matches flared up with such a blaze that it was brighter than broad daylight and her old granny had never seemed so beautiful nor so stately before she took the little girl in her arms and flew with her high up oh so high towards glory of joy towards towards glory and joy now they knew no, neither cold nor hunger nor fear for they were both with god but in the cold dawn in the corner formed by the two houses sat the little girl with the rosy cheeks and the smiling lips dead frozen to death on the last evening of the of the old year the dawn of the new year rose on the hooded figure of the little girl she was still holding the matches of which a pack a packet had been burned more than halfway down she was eventually she was in she was inevitably trying to warm herself people said but no one knew what beautiful visions she had seen and in what a blaze of glory she had entered with her dear old granny into heavenly joys and gladness for a new year so she went up with her granny Tomorrow's going to be east of the sun and west of the moon. I've never actually heard that one before. I miss you so much. You know that? Mama does have an issue with time. I really do. So I think that time should be spent with the people that you love the most. I never would have left your side. I never would have left your side. I would have had you every second of every day. We would have been going on adventures every day like we were. And we will be again. We will be again. It's not over yet, honey. And nothing's ever over. There's never refused care for something, ever. 
I just can't believe it. Hi, baby, I love you. And I can't wait to see you. Let's do Lila Tove. Lila Tove, then good night to you. Lila Tove, may your dreams come true. We say Lila Tove, may Israel protect you throughout the night until we reach the morning light. Hey baby, I love you and I miss you and I can't wait to see you again. Like Papa always used to say, Papa's mama's moon, mama's papa's son, and you are most definitely our rainbow baby and we love you. No matter what, we gotta find a way to work together in the world. Okay? I love you, honey. <laughs>